Live and in color from the Riviera Lanes in Akron, you will see the climax to the greatest tournament for the greatest bowlers in the world, the famous Firestone Tournament of Champions. Before record-breaking crowds starting on Thursday, 48 champions. There were nothing but winners competing, and after 48 games, five remain in a position to win the $25,000 first prize in a record-breaking total purse of $100,000. I'm Chris Shankel, and how nice it is to be back in Akron, Ohio, with the Firestone folks. The sixth time that uh, we've been here to bring you the finals of this event. All right, let's get right to that action. Jim Stefanich and Barry Asher. There they are. The uh, customary handshake. This is head to head. You lose, you're out. You get a fine paycheck in this $100,000 event. And here's the man that won it in 1967, Jim Stefanich and he's a real threat. He moved all the way up from 17th place in the match game competition. And he opens with a boom and strike. Jim Stephanie, Joliet, Illinois. And his opponent in this very first game, whom you met at the beginning of our live color telecast, 24-year-old Barry Asher. He's just been voted the best dressed off the lanes. Well, the eight pin, the only one standing. Billy, you know a lot about this man because you started him. He's your protege. Certainly, Doug, Chris. Brought him back a lot of memory. A uh, very close friend of mine, Esther Woods in California, brought this young man to me when he was eight years old, Chris, out there in Van Nuys, California. It's been a great thrill to see him come a long way. Well, he knows how to shoot spares. And uh, believe it or not, at that time, he was very sharp and uh, had a big high backswing. It went way up over his head. But that shows you what you can do in time with dedication and a lot of talent. We talked about uh, Don Johnson's 300, Richter's 298. This boy had a 299. And on the left lane here at the Riviera, the first strike for Asher in two frames. Now getting ready to stroke in the second. Stefanich with a strike up. It's a double for Stefanich. And he takes a 10 pin lead in the very first game. Live and head to head. This is uh, the do or die part of the competition, Chris. A loss here, and you have to wait till next year. All right. Now looking for three in a row. Three times up to the line and three strikes and now a 20 pin lead. Asher with a strike up in the second. Chris, there's what we were speaking about uh, in the uh, graphic drawing of the speed control. A little too much speed, a little too straight in the entering angle there, and the six goes right around the ten. That's a calculated risk that the player must take. If he were slower than that, it may break too sharply for him. All right. Cross lane. You just joined us. You're watching the professional bowlers tour telecast. This is the final telecast here in 1970 in 13. And of course, what a way to end it for another year with the $100,000 Tournament of Champions. And now on the left lane, he has two strikes, two spares on the right lane, trailing by 20 pens. The action will continue live and in color on the Professional Bowlers Tour. 
shooting in the eighth frame has seven strikes. Got a lot of loft. There's eight, four to go. Got a lot of loft on that, Chris, but he's straight enough. Look at Pete Fountain, who came all the way up from New Orleans. And uh, he's seated next to, next to Jim Stefanich's bride. And in front of them, tenor saxophonist Eddie Miller. What a nice surprise for them to come up after being with us last week in New Orleans. There are the strikes. Eight in a row. Looks like a clarinet, doesn't it? It really does. A four pin on the left lane. After eight in a row. Standing room only crowd. And there have been thousands here in the days of competition. And here today they had to turn them away, unfortunately, but we hope those turned away are watching with all of you on ABC. What a great way to open. We hope you've been with us from the start our 3.30 Eastern airtime. As we look at Barry Asher, he's trailing by 61 because his opponent had eight in a row, then marked with a spare. And there's a double now with a strike in the ninth frame for Asher, cutting the lead to 51. However. However. Uh, with only one frame to bowl, Chris, uh, he has a possible 2.38 game. Jim Stefanich uh, could open in the 10th and still win. He's in the 260s now. For 24-year-old Barry Asher, 10 pin. Chris, that has uh, been pretty much a story, not only for these five finalists in our telecast, but for the 24 <laughs> finalists and those who didn't make the finals. It was Pretty much a story of them all being in the pocket. Wayne Zahn missed by only 20 pins. He was in the pocket almost all the way, but couldn't carry the 410. Jim St. John, practically every ball for the 24 games was in the pocket. And our defending champion, Jim Godman, did make the uh, match game finals. However, he said it was a case of speed control. He was using a little too much speed and just couldn't carry that 10. But they've all been in the pocket this week. Really enjoyed the conditions here at the Riviera Lanes. A 217 for Barry Asher, who will finish fifth in this sixth annual Firestone Tournament of Champions. And in finishing fifth, $2,500. Here's a man still alive for the $25,000 first prize. A strike in the tenth frame. Gorsi is the winner with eight in a row, a spare, and now a strike in the tenth. A possible 279. His opponent's got a hot hand, has had here at Riviera this week. On this pair, bowled a 298, and we're speaking of Dick Ritker. Big game for Stefanich as we find Dick Ritker of Hartford, Wisconsin. Check that shirt for style and class, Chris. <laughs> yeah. 269. 269 to 217. So Jim Stefanich moves a step closer to the first prize of 25,000 as he faces Dick Ritker. We'll see the start of the action in just a moment, live and in color on the Professional Bowlers Tour. I can't say enough good things about Frank Esposito. He used to host the uh, ABC show there called Make That Spare. Right. <laughs> great gentleman, great human being. And there is a must hit for Stephanie. Taking uh, 10 pins away from the 41 pin lead because of the double, Stefanich now gets ready to shoot in the eighth. 
Winner of this game will meet Mike Durbin. Winner of that game into the finals against Don Johnson. Again, a great pressure strike, Chris, down by 31 with only three frames. He's got to keep striking. And the four pin. Disappointment written all over his face. He rolled that ball just a little too good again. You see him checking the overhead score screen. Of course, he still has the ninth and tenth frames to shoot. Mm -hmm. And possibilities. If he could strike out, Dick Ritker would experience some trouble. We could still have a match. And it's a mark for Stefanich. And now Ritker gets up. And he can shoot in the eighth with full knowledge that he has a double working for him. You see uh, beneath their names the tournaments that they have won to make them eligible for this Champions Only event. Three in a row for Ritker. And speaking of that type of format, on ABC, April 25th and 26th, we will bring you the third and fourth and final rounds of the Tournament of Champions from La Costa, north of San Diego in California, the T of C. They get four in a row. He's, he's had eight strikes. And he made a 2-7 conversion in the fifth frame, and that's been it, Billy. I would say uh, Dick Ritker did not experience any trouble there, Chris. That was the only possibility that Jim Stefanich would have to come on and uh, try and win. Mm-hmm. Down now by 62. In the $100,000 event, 25,000 of the winner, 12,500 for second, 6,500 third, and Jim Stefanich will get 3,500. Barry Asher, whom Stefanich defeated 269 to 217 in the first game, will get a check for 2,500. And for Stefanich, now in four years, he's been first, second, third, and fourth. Mm -hmm. Not in that order. <laughs> And there he gives the casual bow to the 10 pin that went out, or the 4 pin that, of course, went out, too. It wasn't nearly as high. That was the solid pocket strike. There you can see now how many shots were in the pocket, or what we call the 1 3 area for the right hander, the 1 2 area for the left hander. In bowling jargon, is referred to as the pocket. A 2 15 for Jim Stefanich. And you're looking at the winner of the second game finishing his game, and then he'll meet Mike Durbin. Oh, he's relaxed and groove. Tonight on ESPN Classic at 8. An attention-filled live color telecast from the Riviera Lanes in Akron, Ohio. Our final stop, the $100,000 Tournament of Champions. Here's Ritker, who uh, disposed of Jim Stefanich with a 263 to 215. And like Stefanich in the first game, who shot a 269, Ritker had nine strikes. Now he goes against 29-year-old Mike Durbin. <laughs> and after Stefanich had such a great first game, he experienced a four-pin problem. And here's Ritker on the left lane with a four. Chris, you can really feel that tension starting to build. Uh -huh as we're going for that uh, higher prize check and the win. They're playing now for a difference of 6,000 in this game and an ultimate chance to win 25,000. 
That's like cutting the bread thin and the meat thick. You're going for that much money. In other words, we're going to distribute $50,000 here this afternoon. Oh, really? This is early Christmas. Mike Durbin, if you're watching in color. Ooh. The 5-7 to start off. Chris, he went around a little bit too much with that shot. Uh, we mean that he had too much circle or too much arc in the shot. You saw both uh, Stefanich and Ritger and, and Barry Asher all playing a more direct line. Now he's going to move way to the left and try and slide this shot from left to right. Not going to try to hook this from as deep a left angle. There you see it. Make it. That's what champions are made of. Tremendous skill. Chris, here you see it in slow motion. The ball from left to right. At this point, it's just biting the lane and just touching the five. Perfect shot. Originally from Burbank, California, now bowling out of Dayton, Ohio, because it's more centrally located. And he made a great change. That's tough in your game, Chris, to cut down. Here you see, taking three steps. He's done this to get a better swing, put the ball in motion. <laughs> Chris, it's pretty much the same, even though it's not the 5 7. Uh, the four or five, the result is pretty much mm -hmm. the same because he went too wide. And this is part of trying to get his tempo just coming on. The four or five. Chris, that man is really sharp. Five, seven, now the four or five. He's razor sharp with accuracy anyway on the second shot. You're right. Ritker opened to his second game with a spare. It's a great fit. Chris, it's the only way to make it. <laughs> Ritker with his first strike. Second frame. Earlier um, on audio tape, he had this to say about his attitude about bowling in this year's Tournament of Champions. The big difference with the Firestone Tournament of Champions is the fact that you have to mentally prepare yourself for this tournament. You try to stay up, stay at a peak throughout the week. You have four days of tough qualifying and finals, and you know that there's much more money, much more prestige if you are the champion. So you have to mentally work yourself, mentally keep yourself at a peak. And I think the bowlers that can do this, sustain this for the four days will probably come out on top. Dick Ritker, who now is a double. This is Durbin with two conversions, now shooting in the third, trailing by 12. Chris, I think we can look for him to go a little more direct with the strike line. Did just that, Billy, leading yes. the 10. Yes, he did. Chris, we're going to take a look at Mike Durbin, uh, the three steps. There you see left foot, and he puts the ball down in motion at the same time. That's the reason for it. Mike has done it at this point, Then it's pretty much the same as in the four-step or five-step approach. There you see staying low. But the key is, as you saw on the first step, putting the ball down. He has the short arm. And in taking those long, fast steps, he felt he could get better timing in cutting to the three-step approach. There are not many left around the country today. A uh, six-footer. Rookie of the year, 1967. As he said coming into this, he's looking for a two-game win streak. He <laughs> certainly is. <laughs> I thought that was a very excellent one-liner. Another 10. Well, there you can see his uh, battle plan or game plan. Started with the two slow and gave them a little room. Relied on trying to get himself set timing-wise first instead of coming out and charging or attacking the lane, not knowing just how it was going to break. See, there have been two games rolled already. He's been off practicing over to the other side. Very smart move. 
Now he's going to the speed and of course the resultant solid 10. Four spares for Durbin and a 14 point deficit against Ritker as we'll be back here at the $100,000 Firestone Tournament of Champions in just a moment. Standing room only crowd. People from all parts of the country coming here to watch this event. And Ritker, who had a double working, leaves the 10 pin on the right lane. And that was really the take charge shot. Uh, you saw Ritger running it out. Uh, of course, three in a row increased his lead another 10. You don't see Ritger go to the speed that much, and he really wanted that strike. Ooh. There were a few oohs and ahs there, Chris. So there you see it. That'll be the fifth frame for Ritker. Remember, the winner of this goes into the final game head to head against tournament leader Don Johnson, where they will bowl for $37,500. Another 10. That was the soft 10 there, Chris. Started that ball out a little more to the right and uh, used up a lot of its roll in getting back and hit very softly, what we call the uh, soft 10 or the half 10. Very astute young man, this Dick Ritker. He's the chairman of the PBA's image committee and uh, very much responsible for keeping the fellows looking sharp, Chris. Okay. Now, Mike Durbin, trailing by 12, the frame, spare up. The four pin for Durbin in that three-step approach. And earlier he expounded on the changes that he made coming into this classic. I've made a major change in my game for this particular tournament this week. Last week I bowled four steps full roller and I have all winter. This week I changed to three steps and a semi roller because the turning ball carries better and has a harder hitting power for this particular house. Chris, there you see it, and it takes a lot of talent to do what uh, Mike Durbin has just told you about, to change your steps, change the roll on your ball. And what he means by that full roller is where the track of the ball goes between the thumb and the finger holes. As you see there, putting his hand in the ball, the track would go between the thumb and fingers. With the semi-roller, the track is outside the thumb, and you've got to be very adept at doing this. We do not recommend the average bowler trying it. And that kind of coordination has gotten Durbin his first strike in six frames. The fortunate thing, Chris, is that he is only down by 13. Dick Ritker couldn't get away with a string of strikes, so there you see it, only a 13-pin difference. Imagine what that next and final game will be like. Ah. Powerful. Ritker is a manicurist out there on those lanes, Chris. Uh, three different types of shots he's using. That seems to be his favorite and most successful. Pretty soft, pretty straight up the track, and uh, the ball kind of just sets in the pocket. He's tried to hook a few, threw a couple real hard. Four seven on the left lane. Chris, I wish you didn't have to go do that basketball game tomorrow. We'd try to get you into the Celebrity Pro-Am here tonight and see how your hook is working. All right, I'll uh, take a rain check maybe next year. All right, 13 pin difference as the action will continue in just a moment. As the best bowlers in the world, compete for their share of the money here in the $100,000
Firestone Tournament of Champions, Riviera Lanes, Akron, Ohio. But first, let's listen to this message. Mike Durbin, born in California, now bowling out of Dayton, trailing by 13 pins. Chrissing cut it to three. And he does with a double. That strike coming in the seventh frame. Boy, the loser here gets $6,500 in this game. The winner has a chance at 25, or if he loses in that final game, 12,500. And by winning, you're still alive for a shot at that 300 game and mm -hmm. 10,000 too. He can take the lead with a strike here, Chris. He could go in the lead by seven pins. Taking an awful long time on this ball. Rolled it well, though. Now, can he repeat from what he did in the first two frames with conversions? This time it'll be the 5-10. Chris, uh, he's got to go now for the left side of this five. And you could tell by the amazed look on his face. I thought he rolled it well from where I was sitting. But going that wide arc around has uh, cost him here. He's got to go to the left of the five and slide it into the 10. He's going to go boldly for it, Chris. Oh. Now, that's really a tough break. Remember, he did convert to 5-7, 4-5. And here in the eighth frame opening, and it increases Ritker's lead to 17. Ritker shooting in the eighth with a spare up. <laughs> well, one needs a touch of luck. Dame Fortune, on. that's right, Chris. Uh, may he or she always be shining on your show. You got to talk to that man upstairs a little bit. ABC's Championship Auto Racing Series begins next Sunday at 5 Eastern Time from Talladega. That's in Alabama. 500 stock car race. And there's another one. Making it a double for Richter. That strike coming in the ninth frame. Yes, Leading he's... by 27. Chris, uh, Mike Durbin now can score 211. If he would strike here and then make three in the tenth, he would force Dick Ritger to mark. Chris, we comment about a, how much time he took on that previous shot where he got the split. Coming back with a strike in the ninth. He went much more quickly that time and then, of course, had a better line on the shot. Where he left that 5-10 split, it was just from too much circle in the ball. The ball wore itself out trying to get back. When it got back, it had no power to carry the pins. All right. He must make three strikes. He had that one out in the tall grass, too, Chris, but yes. a little better roll and got away with the skinny hit. A double. You mentioned the pro celebrity uh, today as Pete Fountain came through the door. I wanted to help him carry his luggage, piece of luggage. Heaviest thing I've ever carried. He told me his bowling ball was in his airplane luggage. He came prepared and going to look forward uh, to having Pete and Eddie Miller both participating along with some of our ABC people and... Uh, Chris, he's alive. Three in a row. Well, Mrs. Durbin came out here to see all this action, and Debbie is looking on with seated next to Mike Connor of Firestone. Chris, if he strikes here, he could have 211. Now you can see what an unfortunate break that five just laying over there in front of the 10 was. 211. Dick Ritker must mark, Chris. All right, a 211 for Mike Durbin, who bowled in his very first game. Now you're looking at Ritker, who bowled a 263 to defeat Jim Stefanich, who had a 215. And if you joined us late, 
In the very first game, Stefanich defeated Barry Asher 269 to 217. A mark. What a difference. That's the best kind of mark. The best kind. And he rolled it well. He went to his little favorite shot, Chris. Uh, beautiful shot right up the strike line. About the 13th board. Did not hit it very hard or did not have the good swing power in there to leave the solid 10. That was excellently well rolled ball underneath all that pressure. So it means we're going to have an all Midwest final between Wisconsin's Ritker and Indiana's Johnson. <laughs> Earlier you heard him comment that he'd bowled a 298 on this pair. He has had a 263 already, and now he'll be in the 230s. Wow. Yes, a strike here would be 238 with a 263. That's 500 for two. That's 250 average for the first two games. So it's a 237 to 211 victory for Vic Ritker. So now the story shapes up here at the $100,000 Firestone Tournament of Champions. Dick Ritker now gets set to meet the tournament leader, Don Johnson, at stake. The championship and $25,000. We'll be back in just a moment. As we get ready for the championship match, here at the Firestone Tournament of Champions, we look to the lanes and in gold and blue, Dick Ritker. Out of the gate. Out of the chute. Now, Don Johnson. 29 years old. At a 300 here. Chris going for that, uh, that much money. That ball's very, very heavy. One last week's New Orleans Open. Hope you hope you watch that live color telecast. And he's wearing the same outfit. Huh? Oh, what a great break. Don Johnson, and uh, this is a little sidelight for us coin collectors. Some folks in New Orleans gave uh, Don and his wife some gold coin pieces. So he thinks by carrying those uh, brings him some luck, too. You can get a lot of gold coins if you can win this one game. Plenty bread. Heavy bread <laughs> with a heavy ball. And Don Johnson has opened with a double. His uh, parents are here watching along with the people that started him in Kokomo, and now Dick Ritker, who has a tremendous number of fans also. Great match, Chris. Pressure building very early when the players get a start like that. Things are all even after two frames, each with a double. The temperature has gone up about 15 or 20 degrees down there, and the adrenaline is starting to flow. Mm -hmm. Up here, too, Chris. I can feel it. Even our marker, Harry Smith, getting fired up. Going for three. They're both still alive for the 300. Three in a row. And now, when Don Johnson matches, he's got two in a row. Chris, we talked earlier about the right lane breaking just a little bit more. On Don's first shot, he experienced that, was fortunate to trip the 4-7. As we watch him this time, I think we can look for him to go to just a little more speed. <laughs> and our split screen showing you that mixer. Don Johnson after three frames and Vic Ritker all even. Six straight strikes. He didn't have quite as much speed as I thought he would have, Chris. 
but the ball is not breaking sharp. That's Don's success this week and tripping out the 4-7 both times. Johnson. Ritker has three in a row. And again, we're even. Eight straight strikes. Ritker and Johnson. Going along at this pace, Chris, it looks like the first one that cracks is going to lose. Could we see two 300 games? That'd be unbelievable. You have to be a champion. You have to have won a PBA event in order to be eligible. There were 48 champions that started here on Thursday. And after 48 games, the five top bowlers in our live telecast. Five in a row. And now the pressure goes right back, seesawing this time to Don Johnson, who has four up. Chris, it's been this kind of week here. In match game play yesterday, Don Johnson rolled 289, defeating Jim Stefanich, who had 268 in the highest and most exciting match of the day. Looks like we have another one right now. Don is on the right lane. It's the key shot here. He's thinking adjustment. A little more speed, he went. Ten straight strikes by two champions. All even. The extended follow through that time made the ball go down the lane. A little more speed. Delayed the roll. Intense young man. Heady player. Great concentrator. They're bowling for $37,500. And don't think there isn't pressure. Um, there you see all the strikes. That's a full boat so far. That's Johnson. Sixth frame. What a match, Chris. Six in a row. And a 10 pen lead. But Dick Ritker has five in a row, getting ready to shoot in the sixth frame. If this one doesn't thrill the audience, Chris, you just don't like fried chicken on Sunday, I'll tell you mm. that. Goes quickly. And we have reached the halfway point at what could be a record-breaking afternoon. 13 stops on the tour. This is the last ninth year of our ABC PBA telecasts. There they are, all those strikes. Pheasant tracks. Mm. Got a <laughs> Between the two, they've got a 300. Right, right Chris. <laughs> Ritker's string is broken. It's a four pin on the left lane. The applause now, much deserved. Great fans here at the Riviera, Chris. The Akron fans really know professional bowling, and they really rewarded the players' great efforts this week. Now this is uh, take charge time for Don Johnson. Right, with six in a row, getting ready for the seventh frame. One pin, strike here, give him seven in a row. Seven straight and 11 pin lead at the moment. Don Johnson, and there is Marianne Johnson, an Akron girl. Praying hard, Chris, they have one they're expecting another. A lot at stake. Twenty-five grand. If you could get a three hundred, ten thousand more, plus a Lincoln Mercury Cougar. Really? Right on, Don. Yeah, right on. 
the eighth frame. Eight in a row, four to go. Don Johnson. Unbelievable trips on those four. Here it is again in slow motion. Very deliberate, puts the ball into motion, stays with it. Good follow through. There you see it. Now here, looks like it's going in high, but he's not breaking it sharp. And look at that two pin come back and nudge out to four. That's shades of Andy Marsich, Pete Thomas. Rolled it well. The eight pin for Dick Ritker. Ritker defeated hot Jim Stefanich who had a 269 in his first game. Ritker came back with a 263. Then he defeated Mike Durbin, 237 to 211. And now in the final game. Chris, uh, he's far from out of it, though. All right. That's his eighth. He has a chance in the ninth. If he sets a strike up and could strike out in the tenth, he'd have a 268, which Don Johnson is now with eight in a row, rolling along at 260 pace. Billy, we look forward to next year joining the PBA and ABC television and bringing the folks another series. He's still alive, Chris. Yep. Strike in the ninth frame for Ripper. Now Johnson. Get this, eight in a row. He's the tournament leader. He's had to be off in the wings, waiting while the other three games were bowled. And now, shooting in the ninth. A lot of money, Chris. Could you hold that ball? Nope. Let's watch it. 10,000, 25,000. For nine. Nine in a row, Chris. Three to go. Don Johnson. If she thinks the pressure is rough. <laughs> Chris, if he's... If he makes three strikes here, he'll buy those babies a lot of shoes, I'll tell you that. I can't think of anybody I'd rather give ABC's money to. Well, he's a great guy. He was the first chairman of the PBA's image committee. Uh, when he came out on the tour, he only had $300. They made him chairman of the image committee, and he bought a whole new wardrobe. He treasured the honor, so, and he really shaped the guys up. Now here he is standing on the threshold of $35,000 if he can make three strikes right here. Let's watch him stroke here in the tenth frame. right now because that ball locked up the match. Right. He is the winner here at Firestone. So he already has 25 grand. A boy that has finished second here in 67 and 68, fifth the other time. And here he has finally made it to the top. Chris, what a way to finish our telecast. But right now he has won it. But the point is two strikes, $10,000 from ABC. Let's watch. gentlemen he carefully looks up at the overhead sheet and you know the story he needs exactly one strike one stroke and let's see that strike there it is in slow motion Chris perfect carry there's that perfect speed one strike Chris, 25,000 in his pocket, 10,000 on this ball. Yeah! 
solid 10, Chris. Unbelievable. And the very last ball, John Johnson, a tremendous hit. There's Marianne Jeff. Wow, a 299 fellow Hoosier, Don Johnson, and on the approach before that final stroke. Wow, the pressure, huh? Well, I'm just uh, thankful that I finally won this daggone thing. This has been a little rascal to me. I've uh, had two seconds and a fifth, and I'd just like to thank Firestone for having us here, and uh, this is the most wonderful week of my life. Uh, Marianne. Uh... Mary Ann, of course, wasn't excited at all, was she? Oh, I, thought, I tell you, I thought she's going to have that baby up there in the audience. So did I. <laughs> you know, Bob Thomas is the uh, new president of the Firestone Tire and Rubber Company. I know Bob is coming in right now, and I know he's watched championships of all types, whether it be auto racing. And I, Bob, I don't think you could find anything more laden with tension, could you? Certainly not. Uh, that was fabulous. It's just a darn shame that... You didn't get that last pin down. I'd like to go gone down and kick it myself. <laughs> but uh, you bowled beautifully all week long. And it was, uh, I watched quite a bit of it, and it was terrific. And Don, you're a real champion. And here's a trophy from Firestone as the champion of the Tournament of Champions. And incidentally, inside's a little check for $25,000. Wow. Thank you, Bob. Let's, uh, thank you, Bob. You and Scotty Brubaker and Mike Connor for helping us out so much. And here she is. Oh, you cry beautifully. <laughs> thank you. Imagine uh, tears. Uh, you think of the cotton in his mouth. <laughs> I can imagine. It must... This is just the greatest week of our lives. Will you let him go back to Kokomo and spend some of this money? Yes, yeah, some of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're now living in Akron, right? Yes, uh... I'll give this to the wife, because I know she's going to get it for long anyway. I might as well give it to her now. There you go. But this trophy is something that I'll cherish, cherish for the rest of my life. Ladies. It's better than a Kokomo basketball victory. You know that. Nice going, Don. Don Johnson.